This morning, West Virginia faces an environmental catastrophe. A chemical spill in Charleston's Elk River threatens the water supply in nine counties. President Obama signed a federal disaster declaration today. Hundreds of thousands of people can't take a bath, brush their teeth, or drink tap water this morning. Bottled water is in short supply. Schools and restaurants are closed. Five people were treated for exposure to the chemical. Turning now to our other big story, making news out of West Virginia. At this hour, thousands of people are wondering how much longer will they have to endure a do not drink ban as they wait for news on the testing underway of that state's water supply for nine counties severely affected by a toxic chemical spill. That chemical spill isn't simply interrupting the daily lives of residents in the area. It's also making some folks ill with area hospitals saying dozens of people are showing up in emergency rooms complaining of nausea and other symptoms. At this hour, four people have been hospitalized. Doug McElway is joining us now live from Bell, West Virginia, with the very latest on the situation. Doug? That's, that's right, Uba. We are here at a water distribution center just about 15 miles east of Charleston. Uh, there has been a steady stream of people coming in uh, virtually all morning long with uh, thermoses, water jugs, milk cartons, you name it, uh, to replenish their water supplies. It is one of 16 such facilities set up here in Kanawha County in West Virginia. People behaving very calmly. There is absolutely no panic whatsoever. That was not entirely the case yesterday when news of this water emergency first broke. When the water company put out the do not use order, a lot of people would rush the uh, big bag stores, the convenience stores to get water. First people got it, the people that got there a little bit later didn't get it, so they, it, it caused uh, uh, some civil disturbances in certain areas. We had to get law enforcement involved. And last night, the president of the chemical company that caused this bill met with reporters just outside of the gates where this bill happened. I prepared a short statement. Uh, and then we'd like to start by um, sincerely apologizing to the people in the affected counties of West Virginia. Um, our friends and our neighbors, uh, this incident is extremely unfortunate, unanticipated, and we are very, very sorry. Those apologies may not go very far. Even before the first day of this crisis had ended, there were something like 800 calls to poison centers across the state. There were six admissions to uh, hospitals, or four admissions to hospitals. Six lawsuits were filed against uh, the West Virginia American Water Company and also Freedom Industries. One of those lawsuits filed by a man who was scheduled to go undergo a kidney transplant. The surgery had to be canceled. He therefore had to go back to dialysis, which contributed, the lawsuit says, to his pain and suffering. Now, let's get to the chemical in question. It is 4-methylcyclohexane methanol. It's a foaming agent used in the processing of coal, specifically to wash the sulfur off the exterior of the coal before it goes to market, as, as uh, mandated by the federal government. We're hearing conflicting views about the toxicity of this stuff. Here again is the president of the company that caused the spill. The chemical has a very, very low um, toxicity. So, so if, if you look at the, the technical data that's available on the product, it has no effect on aquatic life. I'm sure that's a, a, some comfort to aquatic life, but what about to human life? According to the CDC, this chemical may cause irritation of the eyes, skin, upper respiratory system, and headaches. In animals, it may cause unconsciousness and liver and kidney damage. That is no small concern in this largely rural area where a lot of people own livestock, a lot of people depend on livestock. We are hearing, as I said, of uh, four hospital admissions yesterday, m people experiencing nausea, and vomiting, but there is no indication as of yet that is direct, directly related to the ingestion of water. We've been hearing of lots of visits to emergency rooms, in fact, people being taken to other emergency rooms because of overcrowding. But we uh, would suggest that in cases like this, as has ha often happened in the past, when you get a major scare like this, a lot of these symptoms tend to be psychosomatic. But the bottom line here is nobody yet knows when this water crisis will end. Homa? Back to you. Wow, a very difficult and tough situation for the residents out there. Doug, thank you so much for that update.